Good morning again. Yeah, I'll get back to this in a second. That is a 24 valve VR6 now fitted in the frog. Um, and explain why, and there is something that I just found out, but I want to share with you and ask for your opinions. But before this, I'm going to show you what happened to my finger. So, like a moron, because obviously, you know, Monday morning, you must be a moron, everyone. I was doing a couple of bits in my van, uh, just mounting points on the bike when I transport it, and I was going to cut a carpet and insulation where my... Um, well, where my roof is in the van. And I had one of these camping knives, quite sharp. And I had to find a hole uh, because the ribs on the roof, they, they have some holes. And I use those holes uh, on the reinforced sections to hook up my ratchet straps. Normal procedure. Took the knife. I would start poking up, pushing in to cut the insulation and, and the carpet and all that stuff all together few layers it's like if you push it hard enough you can cut it out and you can put my ratchet strap hook on and what I didn't realize that knife <laughs> I need to come back to see it I'm not sure if it had uh, a locking mechanism or not so <laughs> let me show you what happens if you're stupid <laughs> you see this knife once open right there you go once open it has a locking mechanism and you cannot you cannot um, close it back now that knife either doesn't have it or it didn't lock. So what happened when I was pushing? Ah, let's simulate on this CV joint. I was pushing forward. What happened? I snapped it because obviously I was pushing quite hard. The problem is that my finger was there because obviously I was holding the knife kind of this way. So when I was pushing, and bear in mind I was a longer knife, I was pushing a top tip here. So when you're pushing from here. But the resistance is there, you're making right in the middle sort of a guillotine. So what happens, obviously this is all blade, imagine, what happens if you have a finger there, you're pushing from the massive lever and you push there. You're amplifying these folds, that's here, by the time, by, of, uh, by the length of this lever. I don't know, five times, ten times, whatever. And uh, so yeah, this finger was there. Initially, I thought it was just a, a deep cut because when I put the knife out, actually, because it locked, it locked. So I put it out uh, before the blood starts putting out. Uh, actually, it's in the, the bone and just a piece of the bone. The problem is, it was right at the joint. I can't bend it now, I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, well, for just a cut, blood everywhere, blah, blah. I took obviously insulation tape because this is actually this insulation. This is a tip for you. Uh, oh, not this one. Where is the other one? Uh, anyway, I have another one which is like a cloth one. This is a shitty one we're using just to keep the you know few wires together when we do um, proper stuff. But let me show you this kind of stuff, this insulation. But the beauty is this is a cloth one, so it's breathable and it's great for wounds because it doesn't seal because you won't need oxygen to obviously to get the white blood cells to work and all the stuff to get the cloth in. And so they are amazing. So I put a bit of blue tissue, blue roll, because that's what I had in the van, and some insulation. It was great. Wrap it around. All oh, yesterday was fine. Went home. It's like I need to change that because, you know, it's been through the workshop and all the stuff. It's, it, it hurts. And, uh, and during the night, it, it was a nightmare. I couldn't sleep. It was hurting badly, like sharp pin, uh, pinpoint pain. It's like, that's, that's not right, that's not the wound, that feels almost like a broken ball. It's like, no, nah, I can't be because I didn't hit anything, why would I broke it? break it? So this morning I'll cut, it, cut everything out again to see what's, I don't know, to change the bandages or the stuff. It was swallow and it was uh, losing some liquid, it was getting nasty. But when I find out that I do have straight fingers, I mean my fingers, there you go, they're pretty strong. Well, this finger here on the other hand, well, now you can see it is it's pretty strong. It's pretty straight now because there is a lot of bandages and there is actually a small ice cream stick in the knee because that's what I had in the house. And I had to apply it because my finger was on a piece. Literally, it was bent like that, if you see it from this point. Uh, that is towards the inside. 
like uh, have to hold the phone so that, that finger there in the middle in the middle of this joint here uh, it just was pointing there <laughs> like quite a lot it was like holy shit how did I notice that so I don't know what happened but I kind of felt like you know when you cut the chicken and chicken legs and you cut on the joints and you smash them up uh, <laughs> I think that's what happened so yeah i had to put the ice cream stick on it and wrap it with the insulation then i had these bandages quite open they're breathable because again it needs oxygen to fix so i got to be careful with this and obviously working the whole yesterday actually getting the vr6 with the gearbox from there to under the car leave the car put it in it didn't help um but you know, I can't stop working for obvious reasons. Uh, hospital, x-rays, no, nah, maybe, but uh, no, nah, I'm not hospital, how it works. I'm gonna be there for six hours just to get the x-ray, just to say, yeah, it's fucked. Yeah, I know it's fucked. So, um, unless there's something loose in there, but if there's something loose, it's gonna, it's gonna be all right. I put the stick on there, you know, I keep it in a straight place. Shouldn't be able to bend it, should be all right. But yeah, it's quite funny how stupid sometimes you can be. If you see in my back room, uh, I have the machining room. I have the shows, I have... <laughs> None of the equipment has any safety on it. And I've been operating that for, what, 20 years now? Uh, well, not this one, but obviously previous one, this one for over 12 years now. Uh, not a single scratch, not a single nail scratch, anything. Uh, I did call my nails sometimes with the angle grande, but machining and other stuff, never, never a single scratch. And cutting the carpet in my van roof, nearly lost my finger. What a moron! Anyways, that's that's what well, that it's uh, and, and yeah, I have to go slower on this. Anyways, now let's go on it, on, on a serious note. VR6 uh, and VR5 also in MR2. Now this VR6 we picked up with Steve uh, had a great deal. We we found the golf uh, at the scrapyard and uh, well. I don't have to say it next day we were there with with basic tools and get it out the whole complete thing is a, is a manual we have the, the ECU we have the four the whole wiring room the exhaust the plenum the whole thing it was a good deal so we obviously we're gonna make this uh, like I previously said we're gonna um, put them in the cars and sell the whole cars because there's many people asking for so it's like why why not um this is going to be the second one for sale not my frog this is just development card for now um so i put my vr5 out uh engine bay was empty and I put the vr6 in but there was one thing that i don't it's not i don't like but i wasn't convinced so yesterday there was no plenum and the plenum on this is plastic it's pretty flush with the with the head you see this and that uh, it doesn't stick out too much however uh, of course, Steve is like, you know what, I'm not sure about this. I don't like it because once the engine, because I put the engine in with no plenum in, uh, just to make sure it fits perfectly, you know, and it's easy to fit because uh, you can see the plenum, actually, this is the end of the engine. The plenum sticks quite far away. This is variable velocity stacks, um, variable length um plenum whatever you want to call it. it it has a valves inside so depending on what rpms what low it is it, it changes the length of the of the runners which is great um but i put it on without the plenum because it's easy and i was like do you know what there's there's no bloody way to put this because this plenum here the main plenum is thick and that thickness it will not squeeze between um the chassis where well, the body and the engine itself i can obviously this has to go up a little bit but i can literally just put two fingers in there barely that's that's not really good you know and i was thinking well if i put a plenum on how do we get access to the spark plugs i don't like it because our ideology ideology is to make stuff easy uh, not just easy to convert the end that with a car with a different engine but it has to be easy to live with uh, because again i've been doing this job for way too many years now we've seen um too many times that you you, you do a conversion but it's very well, sometimes extremely difficult to live with that stuff you have no access to the stuff it's difficult to to service different change the parts it's just not good 
that's why the 1.8 was a, such a big success because actually it feels better than the original engine and you got plenty of space to work on around the engine around with everything and and it gives you great options with the six-speed gearbox or dsg gearbox you can change the gearbox in CG. you can change everything you can actually remove the head uh, if you want to with the engine with the with the engine inside the car uh, like on the front wheel drive cars uh, this is rear wheel drive so it it's just great and I wanted the VR6 and the VR5 to be exactly the same. I don't want to be hypocritical saying we're doing this stuff and then you get to this point and it's actually not because you can't even put the plenum on the engine. That's, it bothered me. So we kind of almost make a dis, made a decision at the home. We almost bought it yesterday. <laughs> an aftermarket, big, nice aftermarket plenum, which is designed for turbo applications. Now, of course, you can use it on, on NA, but... Uh, I didn't. I wasn't hundred percent convinced because I like the original VR6 and VR5 plenum with the option of variable length runners and all the stuff. You know, stabilizes the flow and everything. It's like I don't know. I like them. I would like to have them on, but uh, yeah, maybe we have to compromise for the sake of make the life easy to you know um, removing the. Uh, the coil plugs and the spark plugs, we have to change them when you have to service the engine. Obviously, you don't have to do it every week, uh, so it's not very often. Uh, some people change it once a year, some people once every five years, depending how much you use the engine, how many miles you put on. But nevertheless, it has to be easy. And uh, so we put this plenum on, which actually didn't fit. What a surprise. Well, it's a piece of shit that is. The only thing good about that is a good aluminum, so we can work on it. I can transform it into something good. But other than that, it is crap. Um, so, no, no. And we overpay for that. I mean, for the same money, we could have um, a do it yourself pieces for a really nice, you know, plenum. Um, but besides that, it's like, okay, it's, it's a reasonable solution, but it's kind of not 100% happy. And I'm not 100% happy. I can't sleep. I keep thinking about it. And then this morning, it was like, hold on. There's always a solution for every problem. But I want a simple solution. I want a solution that people will be like, yeah, all right, that's not too bad. That's, that's, that's okay, I can do that because it's fairly easy, um, fairly easy to do and removes the compromise and it's just all right. So this is what I did. Um, in order to put this plenum on, because this is the, 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 the biggest issue, apart the fact that I now find out you can actually remove the, the plugs, you know, the, the, the coils with the plenum on, I guess, I think, because it looks like there's enough space. I haven't done it yet, but I have to check it. I'm pretty sure you can. And in consequence, you can change the spark plugs without removing the plenum. Now, don't think I'm stupid because uh, I don't know this. I simply didn't have the VRCs before. I never had to do it, so I have no idea. I have to check it. I presume it is. Nevertheless, you have to be able to remove the plenum with the engine on, blah, blah. Uh, regardless, uh, if not, I wouldn't be happy. So what I did, I removed a bolt from this side of the mount. Obviously, I had the a jack, and, and I obviously jacked up the engine on this side on the gearbox. I removed that, lowered this side of the engine about, I don't know, three, four, four inches probably. So what that did, that pivot on this side of the engine mount, lowered it, this side of the, of the engine obviously down enough, once I removed the um, cap filler for the oil, to slide the plenum from this side on, no problems whatsoever. It's like, yeah, but then you have to drop the engine to remove the plenum and all that stuff. It's not really as easy as you're thinking it is. It's like, wow. Why would you think people will be okay with that? Because it is. It's it literally you, you, you put down one side of the engine. When you change the when you change the clutch, that's what you do anyway to uh, remove the gearbox. But the difference is, it's ten times less the job than removing the clutch on the gearbox because you don't have to do it. You just have to lower one side of the engine. Obviously, in this case, my front and the rear engine mounts they're not in place yet, so you have to remove those. Just the bolts, you don't have to remove them completely, just the bolts. Or remove them completely because it's easier anyway, for the sake of the easier um, maneuver maneuverability or whatever. That one, it drops down four inches. Now, the warning is good enough to do it. 
Uh, it's flexible enough. There's plenty of warning, so you don't have to touch anything. Uh, shift cables, no problems. Water hoses, I'm not sure yet because I haven't made them, but the way we make them, it's like, yeah, I don't see a problem there. Uh, exhaust, yes, exhaust, you have to remove it because obviously exhaust will not be flexible enough to drop this three inches down and still be okay because it just doesn't work this way. So exhaust, we have to remove it. This is one downside. And dry shafts, no, <laughs> leave them on, no problems. I see absolutely no problems to leave them on. Um, and again, exhaust is just those six bolts. It's very easy the way we make them because it's simplified. So I see this as a very, very uh, simple solution or maybe a little bit of a compromise to see it this way. And uh, initially thinking it's like, oh, you have to drop the engine to change the spark plugs or probably not, but to change the plan, which you probably never have to, but if you have to, that is the, 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 the solution and, and, and the procedure. So it's not really great, but it is. Because it's literally three bolts, one, two, three engine mounts, leave that one alone. So the engine is in place when you bring it back, back up, everything lines back up, put the bolts on, tie them up and job done. It's not really that difficult. You can do it on a driver because you, you jack up the car or not, just put a um, jack under the uh, gearbox, raise it up a tiny bit, remove the bolts, drop it, do whatever you have to do and bring it back up. And this is not a procedure they have to do often because it's not to change the oil. This is to remove the plenum for any reason you will have to. But again, most people will never have to remove the plenum in their lifetime. Uh, but again, I have to be honest and I, I, I can't be hypocritical. I have to say this is the way it is done. So I think this is a valuable solution for, well, yesterday's problem. Today, I don't see it as a problem anymore. What do you think? Um, obviously, it's not something that, you know, people who have no mechanical skills at all would do it. But those people will never have to remove the plenum in the first place. So, and every mechanic or someone mechanically minded, even a little, will have no problem with this. I've just done it. And it's extremely simple. Okay, the, the engine is not in completely. The wiring needs to be finished and all the stuff because the engine literally is just in, in a raw situation, in a raw mode. The wiring is just thrown in there and I have to tie it up and bring it over where it's supposed to be, which actually ties up very, very nicely. It's, you have to see Steve's car when, when, once you put it down because even the original wiring, it, it, it fits the chassis very nicely. You know, it goes through the original place, which is roughly there, no problems. And uh, so, yeah, I think... I think this is this is good. Obviously, and again, once you do the VR5 and VR6 engine swap, the plenum now sticks out. Uh, the engine itself, no. The only thing it sticks out is the alternate if you don't have this plenum. Uh, but obviously you do. Uh, or aftermarket turbo plenum because usually, you know, that's what we do. Uh, but not always. And then I already explained in the previous videos how you put the lid on this. Like something like this. I'm going to show you again just for the sake of... You know, I'm just going to hold it in your hand. There you go. You know, like uh, Renault Clio with the rear engines. Or a lot of cars with the rear engines, you know. And obviously this is just as a mock-up. It goes up to here, you know. And uh, you can make a small window for the oil filler cap. Or this very easily to remove, removable. Or the top. I don't know. We, we came up with something nice. But this is definitely not a compromise. This is good. Um, so, yeah. I think that's... Uh, I think it's a decent solution. Let me know what you think. Um, because again, something in my eyes could be, you know, a good solution and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, don't think so, but maybe there's always a possibility. Um, how about VR5? VR5 engines, they feel exactly the same, spot on exactly the same. The only thing is they're missing this room here, so the plenum finishes here. If you want to keep it an A, the engine doesn't finish there. It finishes here. You've got more space on this side. That's it. Everything else is identical. Um, because if you've got five cylinders instead of six, and uh, 2.3 liters instead of 2.8 or 3.2, depending what which engine you, you're fitting on. But we're working only with the 24 valve ones, uh, twin VVT. So variable timing on the exhaust and on the, on the inlet. 
comes. Uh, what else? I think that's it. This is it. Now uh, I'm gonna wait for Steve. He's hopefully gonna bring breakfast because <laughs> I didn't because I'm a lazy cunt and uh, <laughs> always rely on him to bring me food. He loves it. No, he probably don't. But anyways. Um, so yeah, the frog is there to finish that. Uh, I need the demobilized issue to get it started. Uh, and then finally today, we're gonna finish the wiring loom, attaching the wiring loom inside the Steve's car. Now he's got my new prototype, um, kind of like a um, interface loom, which well, go on the Steve's videos, you're gonna explain it because we already done it. Uh, there's no point for me to talk about again, but it's getting even easier now, which is unbelievable. Well, yeah, we're getting even easier now. Uh, however, because his car is extremely modified, he needs a couple of more wires, a couple of more inputs, and, and outputs are gonna have to give him a hand to wire them inside, and it's gonna go off the ramp today. We're gonna put the one that we're gonna sell, and that is the one that we're gonna make finally the video we promised you that we're gonna make. How to remove the one ZZ engine on, how to prepare the engine bay to put 1.8 in, and how and what is the procedure, the exact procedure to put 1.8 in uh, with all the you know perks. So the fuel lines, when to do it, because you, for example, again, fuel lines you want to put them in before you put the engine in, because that's gonna take you about five minutes instead of, instead of half an hour, an hour, and a lot of curses. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do today, hopefully. So, I guess I will see you maybe tomorrow. <laughs>